Hello friends, welcome to Trishtech Institute and in today's uh, SUSE or OpenSUSE Hybrid cluster that is Pacemaker tutorial series we will be discussing about uh, stone it. So we will try to understand what is stone it, what is the use of it and what is the importance of it. So the contents here will be covered the overview of stone it, the types of stone it available then how you list down the available stone it devices and how you can use stone it to fence physical cluster nodes using VMC and then how you can do the same thing for a VM cluster node using libvirt. So let's move ahead with the content. So first thing uh, we need to understand what is stone is right. So stone is the abbreviation form of the phrase shoot the other node in the head. So for each word first letter is taken and we made it as a stone it. So from the name itself we can understand this is used to implement the node level fencing. So if you remember there are two types of uh, fencing available one is node level and other one is resource level. So stone it is used for node level uh, fencing. So there are multiple plugins available uh, which you can use to implement fencing and the best part about uh, stone it is it gives you the guarantees like there's no resources are running on the faulty node because power down the entire node so there is no chance of any resource running uh, there and keep in mind this runs as a cluster resource on every node so if you have a 4 node or 5 node cluster so you will have 5 or 4 uh, stony resources running on each node so each node will have one on resource running. Now uh, if you want to have the types of stony so if you want to list down the available stone it plugins so you run simply the command stone it hyphen l it will give you the list of that and if you want to configure and get more details on the configuration part you can use always the stone it hyphen h so that help section will give you overview about the configuration details you can use and here few commonly used stone it plugins like uh, ipmi you have you have the power source that apc power and then you have SBD and you have libvirt. So this is like a example output of stony hyphenl. So it's not the entire output. So it's just a snippet of that. So you get output like that when you run stony hyphen L. Now how you can list down the available stony devices in your cluster nodes. So that's very easy. You just run the command stony underscore admin hyphen I. So this I is uppercase I. So you get a output like this similar so uh, example shown in my screen. Now uh, before moving further I have few follow up questions for you. First question what function does stone it provide and the second question where you must run a stone it resource. So please let me know the answer in the comment section and the hints for these uh, questions is already I have answered both of them in this episode whatever I have covered till now so if you have missed it just go back and watch it again you will get the answers. So now uh, we will see how you can fence using BMC. So before see, seeing that we will try to understand what is BMC. So BMC is nothing but the baseboard management controller. So this is available in all the enterprise or leading enterprise hardware vendor so let's say hp has ilo similarly ibm has hmc like that so that's called bmc so what it does it provides you a remote access and management to your server hardware so let's say you want to monitor your server health and all or you want to see whether hard disks are performing properly they have any hardware error and all so you can see all these things using bmc so typical operations included using so what you do using BMC is like you are remotely access your server, you attach a keyboard or mouse or video to your server, then you do remote power actions. Let's say your server is powered down, you no need to access it physically. You need no need to be present physically. You just connect to BMC and power it on or power it off. So you can do it remotely. Similarly, you can do the health monitoring like let's say whether your disk is failing or your NIC card has a problem, NIC card is down or something like that. So all this kind of uh, health alerts you can see using uh, BMC. Also good thing is it has a separate dedicated network connection. So 
you can connect it whether if you have server already installed or not doesn't matter if your network is configured for vmc you can access it similarly you have the access to the hardware logs using vmc which you can provide to your hardware vendor if you need the assistance so that they can go through that and gives you a confirmation whether you have a hardware issue or anything so now uh, how you can use bmc as a storage device so there are few requirements you need to uh, first fulfill so first thing you need to have a dedicated network connection so that your cluster can access your bmc over network and your bmc should have the capability of remote power management so most of the bmcs already have that like powering off or rebooting or not that's already present so it is a good candidate to use it as a stone device now if everything all are good with bmc mostly good but there are few concerns the main concern here is it says the same power source with your node so if there is a power problem both your node and BMC will be down. You cannot access any one of them. So this is a single point of failure. So what is the solution for this? It's very simple. You have another stony device. Let's say you use the UPS as another stony device. So that will be totally separate from your server and power source network. Everything will be separate. So you will not have a single point of failure. Now, till now you are seeing for physical servers, you can use BMC. Is there anything available for virtual machines? Yes, for virtual machines also available. Here mostly we will be talking about the uh, KVM virtual machines. So KVM, to manage KVM virtual machines, you have the uh, library, the libvirt. So that can be used as a fencing mechanism. So how you can find the proper resource agent name, you run the command CRM RA list. Stone it so this will give you all the uh, resource agents available in your cluster. So you pick it up proper uh, resource agent from there. Now, uh, as I'm telling KVM for KVM, we need to use fence underscore VIRSH as a stone it device. So this thing we'll see while we'll uh, show the demonstration of stone it. So you, once you configure your stone it, you can test it via command stone it underscore admin hyphen hyphen reboot and the node name. So please note, uh, this is not only applicable for virtual machines, this is also applicable for physical servers also. So any stone it device you configure, you can test whether your fencing is working properly or not via this command. So this command will be rebooting the node. So don't try it on a production or already running cluster. So this will reboot the node you may not have a outage because your resources will be moving to other node but you will have a disruption in between while doing this so don't run it on a production cluster so this is an example how you can configure a stone it so i am showing you the example for a, a kvm virtual machines so where you add this primitive the and you use stone it of uh, fence underscore virsh so you need to provide few parameters like ip address of your kvm server and then the virtual machine name from your kvm server and what action you want to do here in this example i'm trying to do off and then the login details to your kvm server so you either you use root and then whatever password and the monitoring interval let's say 60 seconds so there's a default uh, parameters so once you add these two resource agents, so from this you can understand I have a two node cluster in this. So cluster node one and cluster node two. So I need to add for both the nodes, the fence agent here. And once you add that, you add a location constraint. So please keep in mind for cluster node one, the stone it should be running on cluster node two. Similarly for cluster node two should be running on cluster node one. So that from cluster node two, you can uh, fence cluster node 1 and similarly uh, from node 1 you can do the node 2 fence so that's why in this example you can see i am adding a location constraint so that always those resources run on that specific particular cluster node so uh, that's all for today's session uh, the next episode will be discussing about fencing using sbd how you can use sbd to fence so that is for our next episode so thank you thanks for watching this video and uh, before going just let me remind you if you have not subscribed yet uh, to my channel that's rich tech institute so 
please subscribe it press the bell icon so that you get a notification about upcoming videos and you can watch them also if you have liked the video press the like button if you don't like press the unlike button that is also fine and also use the comment section to let us know what you like or what you didn't like so that we can get a, uh, a proper feedback of our work and we can uh, improve accordingly so thanks again thanks for watching this video we'll see you in our next episode